Okay, um, good morning, everyone. I missed you so, so, so much. I hope uh, that you are doing well, uh, in good health, in uh, perfect health, actually. I hope that you are safe, that you're taking care of your families, your mom, your dad, your sisters, brothers, grandparents. Um, I really, really, really missed you, okay? Um, today I will um, uh, discuss with you topic number five, which is uh, the, the market forces of supply uh, and demand. We already talked about this, uh, or most of it, in the lecture, but I will start min al awl. Okay, we will start from the very beginning again. Uh, I hope it will make more sense to you. Uh, and Rabbana uh, Sahel. All right, so let's start. Okay. The theories of supply and demand. Now, when we talk about demand, we're looking at who is demanding goods and services in the market, which is basically the household or the consumer. The buyer or the consumer is the same as the consumer. Okay, so um, buyers or consumers, they buy goods and services. They spend money to buy goods and services. Supply, who supplies these goods and services in the market? The firms or the producers? They produce goods and services. Okay, but please remember when we look at Demand, we need to think like what? Consumers or buyers? Consumers or buyers that buy goods and services. When we look at supply, we have to think as firms or producers. Okay? Okay, some concepts that you should know. A commodity. The term commodity is exactly the same meaning as a good or a service okay we use commodity to explain a final good or a final service okay a market is a group of buyers and sellers uh, of a particular product okay perfectly competitive market this is a type of market uh, we when we speak about uh, supply and demand we make several assumptions one of the assumptions in my market is a perfectly competitive market what does a perfectly competitive market mean this is a market where you have many buyers and many sellers the sellers of the firms they do not influence the price they do not affect the price okay the product that they're selling is uniform or standardized, which means in it's, they're all selling the same type of product. There is free entry and free exit. Yani the firm can enter and exit the market very freely. Tab il examples of that? If you remember Su'ul um, Abur, you have the fish market, or the fruits and vegetables uh, market. If we look at the fish market, think this is an example of a perfectly competitive market. Okay, you have many firms, many sellers of fish. They're all selling the same product, which is fish. Yes, they all sell different kinds of fish, but the product itself is fish. So they're all selling uniform products. Uh, they cannot influence the price because the price depends mainly on the invisible hand where a buyer or seller until they reach the best price using the invisible hand okay uh, and there is free entry and free exit Bardu, the the fruit market is also an example of a perfectly competitive market so again when we talk about supply and demand, we have to make two assumptions. We have to make assumptions. In economics, 
in order to simplify the world, to make it easy for us to understand. Okay, so number one, we assume that my market is perfectly competitive. Number two, I assume that people are rational. Rational means what? They think in a systematic and logical way. Okay, Type. let's focus a little bit on demand. Okay, as a rule, remember, when you look at the demand curve, you will think as a buyer or a consumer in Mustahlik. So for you as a consumer, okay, we're assuming that you are rational. Now, if you are rational, Awaqlani, what will you do when the prices are lower? Will you buy more or less? You will probably buy more. So the lower the price, the higher the amount of goods you will buy. Okay, now here, quantity demanded, we refer to as QD. This is the amount that you will buy as a consumer. The law of demand states what? that other things being equal when the prices increase people buy less when the prices increase people buy less so basically when p let's uh, put an arrow here when p increases all right what happens to your quantity? Quantity demanded. Okay, P increases. So, quantity demanded will decrease. This is actually the law of demand. This is the law of demand. All right. Okay. Individual demand, this is the, the demand of one person. And you also have market demand, which is the demand of many people. So again, quantity demanded. This is the amount of goods that you will buy. The law of demand states that as your prices increase, quantity demanded will decrease. Because people buy more when your prices are low, and people buy less when your prices are high. This is an inverse relationship. Individual demand this is demand for one individual. You also have market demand, and this is the demand for the whole market. Okay. Okay. In other words, again, quantity demanded rises as prices fall and quantity demanded falls as prices rise. This is how your demand curve looks, lo looks like. It is a negative relationship between quantity and price. Now on your x-axis you have quantity, on your y-axis you have price. This is the shape of any demand curve, even without numbers, it's a negative curve. There's a negative relationship between price and quantity demanded. Now, if you graph the graph and then just pick any point, label P uh, note, for example, find the Q for it. This is step one, P note right here. This is the quantity when the price is P note. Let's say the prices increase to p1 
what happened to your quantity demanded? It decreased from Q naught to Q1. So this is the law of demand. As prices increase, quantity demanded decreases because as prices increase, people buy less. Now the question again, is this a shift or a movement in your curve? Did I? Did I actually shift the curve up or down? I didn't. I moved from this point right here to this point. If I refer to this as point A and this is point B, then this is a movement along your curve. What caused this movement along your curve? A change in your price. So the movement along the curve right here, again, okay a change in price now here in this example you have a decrease in price so if this is p1 this is q1 if prices decrease your quantity demanded will increase again is this a shift or a movement this is a movement along your demand curve caused by a change in your price okay I hope this is clear. All right. So let's see if we have uh, an empty slide like this one. And I ask you, please graph a demand curve. A graph a demand curve. Uh, let's see. Let's. Okay, you can use a paper and pen and graph this with me. Practice, please. This is your y axis, um, and then this is your x axis right here, and this is your um, demand curve right here. Now, the most important thing that you should do is that you have to label your graph. What does label mean? أعلم الجراف دي شكلها إيه؟ بتقول إيه؟ Okay, so. You have here on your y axis, you always put P for price on your um, x axis right here. Okay, let's see. On your x axis, you have Q for quantity, and this is your uh, demand curve right here. Okay, D for demand curve. So the D stands for the curve itself, the demand curve. Let's say I want you to show me uh, that prices, what happens when prices increase? Price increase. Okay, so Pick any point, any point, okay, on your graph, any price. Let's say my price is right here. This is uh, P1, okay, and find the quantity at P1. So you will graph, you will hit the curve, and then go down, find Q1, okay, right here. This is, let's say this is um, point A, okay, uh, and this is Q1 right here, down here, okay, let's see. Q, uh, 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 uh. okay. This is Q1 demand, quantity demand at one. Okay. Prices increase. Pick any point to show the price increase. Let's say uh, right here. For example, this is P2. Okay. Right here. So show your quantity demanded. All right. Let's see. Go down. This is um, QD 
two, right? Quantity demand two, right here. Okay. And this is point uh, B right here. All right. So show your arrows as well. Quantity demanded has decreased from Q1 D to Q1 uh, to Q2 D, and your prices have increased. You moved from point A to point B. Now, is this a shift or a movement? This is a movement along your curve. Okay. Okay. I hope this is clear now. So we know that a change in price causes a change in quantity demanded. Now QD, this is quantity demanded. These are points on your demand curve. D is the actual demand curve. The only factor that causes a movement along your demand curve is a change in price, all right? Now we want to know the factors that shift the demand curve itself. Now, if this is your original demand curve, an increase in demand is a rightward shift or an upward shift. A decrease in demand is a leftward shift or a downward shift, okay? So, Let's look here. Um, here, we're looking at the difference between individual demand and market demand. Here, look at the, the table here. This is called a demand schedule. This is a demand table that shows the relationship between price and quantity demanded. Now, when the price is zero, this, is, this demand is for Catherine. It's an individual demand for one person, okay? So when the price is zero, she will buy how many ice cream cones? 12 cones. Now, as the price increases, what's happening to her quantity demanded? It's also decreasing. So for example, when the price was $2, how many ice creams did Catherine demand? You can get your answer from the table or from the curve. So when the price is two, quantity demanded is four. If the price decreases to one and a half, what happened to her demand for ice cream? It became six, all right? So this is an example of an individual demand curve for Catherine. If I want to calculate the market demand, now the market demand is the sum or the total of all individual um, demands for ice cream, okay? So, if this is the price of ice cream, this is the demand for Catherine, this is the demand for Nicholas, I need to get market demand. How do you get market demand? For every price, you will add the quantity demanded of the individual people. Yani, at the price of zero, I will add Catherine's quantity demanded, which is 12, plus Nicholas's quantity demanded, which is seven. So your market demand is 19. At the price of 0.5, Catherine's quantity demanded is 10, and Nicholas's is six. Well, market demand is 16. At the price of one, it's 13 and so on. Okay, so at each price, I will add Catherine plus Nicholas to get the market demand. Ahmed came in. Hina, Hazawit, Catherine, plus Nicholas, plus Ahmed, and I will get my market demand. Okay, I can give her from the table D, and I can give her from the graph. Zay, if I have Catherine's demand curve and Nicholas's demand curve, I can easily also calculate the market demand. How? For example, at the price of two, What's Catherine's demand? Four. 
at the price of two, what's Nicholas's demand? Three. يبقى the market demand at the price of two is Catherine's demand, which is what? Four plus Nicholas's demand, which is three. يبقى at the price of two, the market demand is seven. Okay? Tamim. Okay, I want to know the factors that cause a shift in my demand curve. Number one, and we talked about this uh, during the class, is income. الدخل بتاع consumer. Now, when we talk about income, we have to consider two things. Whether your good is a normal good or whether your good is an inferior good. Now, if it's a normal good, okay, معناه إيه normal good؟ إن لما الدخل بتاعي بيزيد, when my income increases, I will also increase demand. Okay, يعني إيه؟ إن أي حاجة that I like to buy, let's say clothes, shopping, لما salary بتاعي تزيد, I will probably spend more to buy more clothes. This is an example of a normal good, okay? Such as here. If you look here, a normal good, your demand increases. Yani increases, you will shift it to the right. Shift it to the right, okay? Tayyib, the inferior good, yani when your income increases, you will demand less of that good. You will demand less of that good. How will you demand less of that good? For example, if I have, um, okay, uh, public transportation. In Masruf Bitai Zed, Lissa Harkab, public transportation, Walla Harkab Uber, Walla Harkab taxi, and so on. Yib Anna La Madakli Zed, when my income increased, my demand decreased. Okay, so here, this is an example of an inferior good. When your income increases, actually, your demand for that good will decrease. زي مثلاً أنا متعود of أتغدى كشري. I like to eat kushari for, or I don't like to eat it really, but because of my income is limited, uh, I eat kushari. What if my income increases? Will I still eat kushari, or will I go find a McDonald's burger or? or uh, go uh, eat at a nice restaurant instead. So what happens to your demand for kushari when your income increases? If we assume it's an inferior good, your demand for it will decrease and shift fin to the left. Okay. okay, number two, the number of buyers. When the number of buyers increases, so does demand. So when demand increases, it shifts where? To the Right. Okay. If a number one factor that we said that shifts demand is income, whether your good is a normal good or an inferior good. Number two, the number of buyers. If the number of buyers increases, your demand will also increase. Number three, the prices of related goods. And here, the prices of related goods, we're looking at two categories substitute goods and uh, inferior goods, uh, and sorry, sub substitute goods and complementary goods. Five, نركز على substitute goods. Substitute goods are goods that substitute each other. البدائل. Like what? As in the picture, we have uh, Coca-Cola and Pepsi, or burgers and pizza, or uh, let's say um, cappuccino and hot chocolate, Coffee and tea. All these are examples of substitutes. Okay? Type. If we consider substitutes, look here. Let me just increase the font here. 
Okay, give me a second, Dashan Adam, bus. Give me a second. You can read uh, the, the the example now and give me a second, okay? Okay, um, let's continue. Okay, here we have two, um, we have substitute goods. We have Coca-Cola and we have Pepsi. They are goods that substitute each other. So here, what happened? The price of Coca-Cola increased. How does this affect Pepsi? If you are, again, Please remember, when you look at demand, you're thinking like a what? Like a consumer or a buyer, okay? So when the price of Coca-Cola increases, you as a buyer will substitute Coca-Cola for Pepsi. So the demand for Pepsi, it will increase and shift to the right. I hope that you're using paper and pen while we are uh, talking to make your life much easier okay so the price of pepsi sorry the demand for pepsi increases and shifts to the right how about uh, the demand for coca cola what's happening here this is a change in price a change in price causes a what a movement not a shift but the demand for coca cola is a movement when prices increase, quantity demanded decreases, okay? Um, and for Pepsi, the demand has increased, okay? So these are substitute goods. Now let's go to complementary goods. Complementary goods from the name itself are goods that complete each other. They are goods that complete each other, like peanut butter and jam, tennis balls and tennis rackets, toothbrushes and toothpaste, uh, coffee and creamer, uh, tea and sugar, okay? So with complementary goods, we have bread and butter here. Let's say the price of bread increases. Now think again like a what? Like a buyer or a consumer. The price of bread increases, but what will people do with butter? They will, because they are complementary goods, they are goods that complete each other. Actually, the demand for butter will decrease. It will shift from D1 to D2, okay? Type with demand for bread, the, this is, a change in price which leads to a change in quantity demanded okay type the fourth factor that shifts your demand curve we refer to as consumer tastes this includes fashion seasons new trends technology uh, 
So question, would you demand more or less hot chocolate in the summer? In the summer, the demand for hot chocolate usually decreases. And when it decreases, it shifts to the left. Okay. In the winter, uh, the demand for hot chocolate increases or any hot drink and your demand curve shifts to the right. Okay. Okay. In the winter, okay, we have this answer right here. Type if the fashion is, uh, let's say, to wear um, green. Okay, the, the the fashion is to wear green. Then the demand for green clothes will increase because of this fashion trend. The demand for coats and jackets in the winter uh, increases. In the summer, the demand for swimming suits and hats and caps increases. So here you need to use your mind a little bit. Okay. Type application. Tan Helushwait as Ilamabad about demand. Okay, here. What happens to demand for Amidi chocolates if your income rose to one million million dollars in the lottery? Okay. Here you are a buyer. And you usually buy Amidi, this is a type of chocolate. With Dakhil Ta'ak Z, one million dollars. Now let's assume, let's assume that uh, these chocolates are normal goods. Again, you have to always keep in mind the four factors that shift demand, which are what? Income whether you have a normal good or an inferior good, number of buyers, prices of related goods, whether they are uh, substitutes or complementary goods, and number four, we have um, tastes and fashion and so on, okay? So here, if we're assuming that uh, these chocolates are normal goods and your income has increased, what will happen? Your demand will increase and shift to the right. If I were you, I would get a paper and a pen and I would show the shift on my own. Okay. The next one. Soup is an inferior good if what? What's the definition of an inferior good? If your income increases, you will demand less. So what's the right answer? Let's read them together. The demand for soup falls when the price of a substitute, no, this is not right. The demand for soup rises when the price, I don't care about price, we're looking at um, income. Okay, uh, C is not right. D, the demand for soup falls when income rises. So this is actually the right answer B. Okay, pizza is a normal good. Again, what's the definition of a normal good? A normal good is, is by definition, when your income increases, your demand also increases. And this is actually right here, um, point A. The demand for pizza increases when your income increases. Okay. The next one, a very hot summer in Atlanta will cause what? Now you have a very hot summer. So this is what? A seasonal change. A very hot summer in Atlanta will cause the demand for lemonade to shift to the left. No. The demand for air conditioners to decrease. No. Uh, the demand for jackets to decrease. I think this is the right answer because in the summer you don't really need uh, jackets. So this is your answer. So right here. Okay. So again, let's summarize what we have done uh, regarding uh, demand. So far, we know that when we look at demand, we're looking at or we're thinking like what? We're thinking like the buyer or the consumer. So when your prices are high, you buy less. When the prices are low, you buy more. This is actually the law of demand. This is the law of demand. Okay. Now, 
um, the factors, which factor causes a movement along your demand curve? A change in price. And again, we have four factors that shift your demand curve. These are, again, whether your, your income, whether you have a normal or an inferior good, the number of buyers, prices of related goods, substitutes and complementary goods, and number four, fashion, tastes, and so on. Okay, let's look at supply. Now, when we look at supply, um, we're thinking like what, like who? We think as firms. Now, this is very, very, very important. Okay, a supply, firm. Firm is the same as the producer. Okay, a firm's main goal is to what? Or a seller. Okay. A firm's main goal is to maximize profit. Now, if we want to maximize profit, okay, then we want to sell at high prices. We want to sell at high prices. Even when we think of supply, we think as producers that want to maximize their profits, selling at very high prices. Again, demand, I'm thinking like consumers or buyers. Supply, I'm thinking like firms or producers with the main goal to maximize my profit and to sell at very high uh, prices. Sell at very high prices. Okay. Like demand, we're going to go through the same steps exactly like demand. Okay. So, the supply schedule or the supply curve, this shows the relationship between price and quantity supplied. Quantity supplied, this is the amount or the number, the quantity of goods that the firm will supply. Okay. Law of supply. Okay. Our main goal is to maximize profit. So, the law of supply says what? In the لما السعر بيزيد, when prices increase, increase, the supplier will supply more. So the quantity supplied rises. So here you have a what? A direct, a direct or a positive relationship. You have a positive relationship between price and quantity supplied, which means what? When your prices increase, okay, as prices increase, quantity supplied also increases. because we want to maximize profit, okay? Again, individual supply is the supply of one person, the supply of one person. Uh, market supply is the supply of many people, of many firms. Okay, here we have the supply of Ben. All right, let's look at this. The price, of, if Ben decides to sell ice cream at zero, he will not supply anything because he will not make any profit, okay? Now, if the price of ice cream that he sells is for half a dollar, he will also supply zero ice creams because this will not get him any profit. Type. How about when the price is one and a half, he will supply, uh, the market with two ice cream cones. 
If the price is three dollars, he will supply the market with five dollars. As the prices increase, Ben will supply more ice cream because this will get him more profit. Type. If you graph this, please graph this at home. Use step by step. And if the bill price is zero, give zero. Uh, cones when the price is half, what do the quantity supplied is zero. When the price is one, quantity supplied is one, and so on until you graph the points and connect them. Graph the points and connect them. You get your supply curve from the shape. Is this a direct or an indirect? relationship this is a direct relationship between price and quantity supplied but again rule you have to remember when we look at supply hafakkar zay mean zay al firm aw al supplier zay al firm aw al supplier aw al seller al huwa al main goal bitaw is to what to maximize profit yibqa lamma babia bi sa'r a'la I will provide the market with more uh, ice cream. Okay, please graph this at home as well. Practice your graphing. Again, now, is this a shift or a movement, the change in prices? Lamassar can two, masalan, the quantity supplied was three. Now, when the price is increased to two and a half, the price is now four. Moving from this point to this point to this point to this point. This is a movement along the curve, not a shift in the curve. Okay? Caused by a change in price. Type. Shifts in supply curve. The same way we talked about shifts in demand, we want to talk about shifts in the supply curve. If this is the original supply curve right here, a right word shift, a shift to the right is an increase in supply. A decrease in supply is a shift to the left. Okay. Type. Let's look at the factors that the factors that shift your supply curve. Factors that shift your supply curve. Number one, input prices. Input prices. Homeil inputs the inputs are your factors of production. They are your factors of production. Il whole land will labor will capital that we use to produce a final good or service. Taib la masar il inputs the let's say. إحنا بنتكلم على الايس كريم أنا بصنع ايس كريم okay suppose says here what the price of milk falls سعر اللبن بيقل اللبن ده إيه it's an input that I use to produce the final output اللي هو إيه الايس كريم طيب لما سعر اللبن يقل is this good or bad for you as a firm عشان إحنا بنتكلم على supply it's what it's good لأن سعر التكلفة أو the cost of production بيقل so you will supply more ice cream so you will have a shift where to the right if you look here this is your shift okay يبقى تاني number one again always remember إن أنا لما بتكلم على supply curve لما بتكلم عن supply curve I have to think like a what? like a firm or a supplier which means what? that um, I'm looking at maximizing my profit number one factor that shifts your demand is the input prices سعر ال inputs they are factors of production the land will labor will capital سعرها أقل يبقى سعر التكلفة أقل يبقى I will supply more طب لو سعرها زاد لو the price of milk increases يبقى كده سعر التكلفة زاد 
يبقى كده I will supply less ice cream and your supply will shift to the left. Okay. Technological improvement. This is logic. يعني logical logically كده لما التكنولو technology improves. This means that your production will also improve and your supply curve will shift to the right. Okay. Number three. Number of sellers. Lama the number of sellers increases, your supply will also shift to the right. Okay, your supply will shift to the right. Okay, the last one is expectations. Now, expectations is what Tawqat Tatil firms. If you are Ben. وهو بيصنع آيس كريم and you're expecting إن سعر الملك uh, اللي هو input للآيس كريم هيزيد next month what will you do now you will increase the production of آيس كريم now عشان الشهر الجاي انت متوقع إن سعر التكلفة هيزيد فهعمل إيه دلوقتي I will increase the supply of آيس كريم okay but again, the four factors that shift your supply curve are input prices, the number of sellers, technology, and expectations. Technology and expectations. Okay? Type they make uh, market demand في برضو market supply market supply اللي هو ايه sum I will addition of all the suppliers now if you here have the price of ice cream and this is the Ben's supply of ice cream and this is Jerry's supply of ice cream and you are asked to calculate market demand what will you do you will add the quantity supplied for both مع كل price يعني at zero price Ben's Quantity supplied is zero. Jerry's is zero. You buy market demand is zero. At 0.5 or half a dollar, Ben is zero. Jerry is zero. Well, market demand is zero. At one dollar, Ben's uh, quantity supplied is one. Jerry is zero. You buy market demand is one, and so on. The had the mausal le price three. تمام. ممكن برضو أعملها using uh, graphs. If this is the given Ben's supply with Jerry's supply, لو هو مديني Ben's supply and Jerry's supply will be only hit in market supply. هعمل إيه على كل سعر هلاقي the quantity supplied and I will add. يعني مثلا at the price of two, what's Ben's quantity supplied? Three. At the price of two, what's Jerry's quantity supplied? Four. If the market supply at two, هاي بقي Three plus four, which is seven. Okay. Hamil price. Tamim. Okay. Type questions are supply. An advance in production technology will lead to what? A advancement or improvement in production technology hat amil e hat alilitaklifa with the with the supply. Iba, what's your right answer? A decrease had a a decrease in a firm's cost, and an increase in its supply would zawit a supply. But your answer is C. Lead, the resource, is an important input in the production of crystal. We use it as an input or factor of production for intake of crystal. طيب the price of lead decreases. سعر lead decreases. إيه اللي هيحصل طيب دي حاجة كويسة ولا وحشة? When the price of lead decreases, this is something good. عشان سعر التكلفة هيقل. فأنا هنتج كريستال أكتر. Which is uh, the answer is C. Okay, good question. What is the difference between a change in demand and a change in quantity? Demanded a change in demand and a change in quantity demanded. 
our change in supply and the change in quantity supplied. A change in demand, this is a shift in your curve that's caused by the four factors that we A change in quantity demanded, this is a movement along your curve. A movement along your curve. A change in demand or a change in supply, this is a shift in the curve. A change in quantity demanded or quantity supplied, this is a change in a movement along your curve. Amen? Okay. Uh, and I'll stop here. We'll have a video, any putting demand and supply together. Amen? Okay.